I want to uh, preface this video with a little caveat. Uh, I filmed this at 3 in the morning, and I thought I had to go to work at 6. Um, I got to work, and I wasn't supposed to be there. Uh, that's just due to the fact that I've been working crazy hours. Like I've mentioned before, I was dead tired. I wanted to rush and get the video out. So this video is going to be kind of disjointed. Um, I'm all over the place. Uh, this part's in this video where I thought I was hearing something. It might have been my digital recorder real low, had some sounds coming, or I may have just been hearing things. Like I said, uh, I was really tired, so uh, there might be some whacked out moments. There might be some random things thrown in there that, uh, like I said, I was just tired. So it's a little disjointed. Get out of this video, what you can get out of it. Like I said, I'm not shooting it over again, but, uh, I hope the uh, the basic premise is there for people to gleam what they can gleam from it. Um, like I said, I, I apologize for being uh, all over the place and maybe rambling or whatever. But, um, you know, that's that. Uh, and one other thing, um, I got to give props to Nitrate. Like I said before in the last video, uh, it was something that he wrote uh, has had to do with routing. Uh that you can do with the MV that kind of like open my eyes to something. So he kind of led me down a path, whether wittingly or unwittingly, but you know, he led me down that path regardless. So I got to give, uh, I got to give props to him. You know, he walked me right to the water's edge and, um, I just, uh, crossed the river. But, uh, with that being said, let's get to this video. All right, this wax back at you again. Uh, this is part two to my last video, which was uh, tracking out no MIDI. Um, this really doesn't have anything to do with the last video per se, but what it has to do with, if you watch the last video, and if you haven't seen it, you need to go back and check out uh, tracking out no MIDI. It has to do with the MVA OP1 and the digital N. That is the most important piece on the... Uh, on that uh, MV8 OP1, uh, the hell with the uh, six analog outs, um, and I'm going to show you why. I told you I had a game changer coming up for you, and I'm going to show you why this is a game changer. Um, like I said, this is about the MV8 OP1, why it's so important to have that digital input. Okay, with that said, um, I'm going to try to keep this short. Cause it can get real long. Like I can get real in depth. There's there's really a lot of techniques that can come off of this. What I'm about to show you. But check it out. I was looking through uh like old forms, like just reading on the MV, and um I came up across a couple people saying, you know, I just wish you could do like looping on the MV. I mean, you could do live looping, but I wish you like record looping. And then um some other stuff saying, yeah, you know, I, I wish the audio tracks was uh. Was uh you, you you could um overdub on them, but you can't because uh something about the feedback loop or whatever. So so basically yeah, your audio tracks are have a polyphony of one. You know you go to play audio track, you go to hit something else. It's just like a monophonic synth. You're only gonna get that one note. So a lot of people you know say, "Dag, you know I just wish I had that." You know um well to quote my um. My man Elliot from Die Hard. Hans, booby, I'm your white knight. See, because wax can give that to you. You hear what I said? Wax can give that to you. What? All right, Um, just to jump into it. If, if you looked at my last video, I said, look at it again. The importance of that digital end is that you can go out from the standard digital out in every MV 8,800. And you can go back into that digital end. Now check this out. You see I got an audio track arms up here. I'm going to hit record. Alright, I got some, um, some loops here. Direct record. Now check it out. Hit 
shift and stop. So basically, can I play loops over top of each other? Not in a live setting, but in a in a recorded setting? Absolutely. Game changer. Um, can I overdub? Technically, you still can't overdub, but with well thought out uh loops, uh it can sound like it's overdubbed. Um I call it pseudo overdubbing. Um if, if if that don't give you a, a a rise to your nature, then then you got ED and you need the little you go need to go get the little blue pills, cause that is crazy. Um, I mean, just the things that come off of that, you know, I could go I could go hours on video or like different ways you could flip, you know, flip the script. Um, you you can go to a a MIDI track and and, and say say that wasn't even drums it was something else instrumentation you could lay midi drums up under it um you could just do the drums uh, in the audio track and put it in the drum setting instead of trigger or uh what's the other one gate and you could just rip the drums off live you know i mean no quantize you know if you're that good uh let me go into, let me go into edit mode. But if you saw the last video, you see I sampled like two bars. And the reason I did that, because the, uh, the end points are all the same. If you look at the loops, next one, I mean, it's just perfect. Now with, uh, with that, another thing you could do you could um you got access to your um exclusive groups so you can have you could uh put just just any loop on exclusive group and turn the volume down and then uh, set it up with another sound and you can use that to mute the other loop and then bring the other loop back in when you need to you know you could do that um you, you can uh you can BPM sync. Oh the other thing I want to say was the uh when I laid that last track since you're direct recording if you're gonna do MIDI stuff, MIDI drums under it, you have to be careful because if I change this tempo up here, it does nothing. You go lower or you go higher. Because when you record like this, it acts like it's printed, printing right to tape. So if you do MIDI drums in there, it's gonna slow down when you change the BPM, even though the loop, the loop doesn't. Now where the loop will change is if uh is as if in your loops you turn the BPM syncs on, then when you go and change the uh, the BPM. Then you'll get it to change, and and, and there's there's times when you, when you want that to happen, and there's times when you don't. But um, just think of it like this. All right, I did what? It was what three, four audio loops playing there. You can play as many as I guess your ten fingers or whatever. You can punch in and out or whatever. But remember this: that you have eight audio tracks. Plus a pattern track with another audio track on it. So now you're not limited to those eight or nine. You got a whole bunch. And it and it can get really goofy. You get you really gotta you gotta you gotta think it out because you got five hundred and twelve slots in the uh, MV for audio. So it, it can be mind blowing when you sit here and you think about it. Basically, what you turn your MV into is a giant SP. 
There's no more SP-808-606-505. You got a SP-8800. That's the way you got to think of it. It's actually, when you, when you play with this technique here, you got a different box. You got a set. Roland gave you a second box, and they didn't even know they gave you a second box. I don't think anybody knew they gave you a second box. It's crazy. Um, like I said, you can you you can go in and overdub on the next track all your instrumentation. Uh, you can go to another track, then you then you can um you can save one track and bounce it all down to the uh, to the last track. You know, the last audio track, you can go like seven to one, bounce everything down, bunch of audio loops down to your last track. And then you can save that last track as an audio track. All right. Get rid of the other tracks or save them out as audio tracks and just erase them off your, uh, your, your sequencer page. Now you got, you got the one track that's bounced down with everything. Then you got seven other tracks fresh to put more audio on. Is that crazy? Um, here's something else you can do. You can uh, set an MFX track up. And I'm not going to do it here. But you can set an MFX track up. And you can get a bunch of MFX effects by. And everybody should know how to do this. Setting the MFX track up. And recording your CC controls. With the knobs. And... Let's say you want to do filter sweeps all throughout the uh, song. You hit play, record those filter sweeps. Um, how you would do this is you would put the uh, MFX on. You, you, would, you would set your mixer channel, your audio track channel to, like, say, AUX2. And you would put your M M MFX on AUX2. And then you would put the AUX2 going out to the... Uh, Digital input one and two. So it will go out, come back in, and then when you record that, it will print those uh, those control changes. Say uh, you know like a filter sweep through the whole song on that track. Then you could change the MF, MM, MFX up, put on something up, putting on something else. Uh, I don't know anything, uh, the space echo, or whatever. Then you erase the uh, MFX part down here, erase those control changes, then go back through the song, record again, and the spots you want that to come in, you, you know, bring it in or out, bring it in and out, the uh, space echo or whatever. And then you print that, you record that, and the first uh, audio track with the changes on it to a fresh new track. And you can keep doing that over and over. So the final product sounds like it has like, like you used eight, mm you know multi effects in it and you really just you know just kept printing it this way so you could you could do stuff like that i mean it can, it can get crazy 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 what you can do um like i said i i this video would turn out to be like three four hours if i really got down just like showed you you gotta like kind of use your mind on this one um here's the other thing about those loops and how they loop in time because they are perfect you can get counterpoint and you can get a uh, you can get polyrhythmic stuff and and you you can get different rhythms and you can get different swings going let me uh let me show you here all right this is just straight That's pressing all of them at the same time. Now let me um let me do the I'm gonna like flam the uh the bass drum and the uh and, and the snare. I'm gonna do the bass first and then the snare second, right behind it, like a sixteenth apart. See how the rhythm changes? Now I'm gonna flam it the other way. I'm put a, I'm gonna flam it with the snare first and a bass drum behind it.
There's another one. They're the same exact patterns. But uh, I'm just starting with different times. But since they're perfect loops, they sound different. But they always come back at the same um, at the same point. tracks off um now when you're doing when you're doing uh, audio tracks like this your timing got to be pretty it got to be pretty tight uh, because you can't use the quantize on the audio tracks the only way you can do that is if you use an outside sequencer and just off the top of my head you could probably Something like a SP505, which has a digital end. You could probably go out of the MV, back into the the 505, and actually have all the real time effects going. While like something like a like a uh, MPC2000 actually uh, sequences the actual audio phrases, and then you could line them up how you want to in time. I'm I'm guessing that will work I never tried that but just thinking off the top of my head you could do something like that that might make for a crazy live setup like a 505 or MV and like a outside another outside sequencer but that's just off the top of my head uh, let me see how this sounds let's get out the metronome Overdub in one pass, you know, you can bring those, those loops in and out. So that's just playing around or whatever, nothing real serious, but just just showing you what the possibilities. Uh, let me see. How about on this pattern track? There's something else you can do. You can do you can do dropouts too. Um, and what I mean by a dropout is this here. Do a dropout. Are right, you hear this here? And you would 
click on like audio phrase. I mean, you would click on the audio phrase, go to the audio event parameter, and see where the BPM is synced 93, drop it down to 86 and see what happens to the audio. See how it drops out? I'm going to put that back. And then like in song mode, you would like step record it. You would like put pattern. Might do the first one like once, you know, twice and the second one. So drop out once, a little break. Wow, I don't know where that's coming from. Let's try that again. We got a ghost in the machine. It's crazy. Let me try that again. But, um, all right, well, you know, that's that. Um, let's see, erase this here. I mean, there's really nothing else for me to show you. Uh, I hope that makes sense. Um, you gotta remember to keep your stuff, you know, on um, one and two. These your audio tracks. Keep, you know, when you're when you're bouncing down, you want to. Uh, you're bouncing down to one track. You're gonna keep everything open. When you when you, when you're doing different layers, you're gonna want to uh, solo that track out. Or if you want to hear the other track, you want to monitor the other tracks, you have to change those tracks to mix and not multi one and two. Because when, when multi one and two is left open, you, it's just going to bounce down to the, uh, you know, whatever. If it's not soloed, it's going to go to the next track like a, uh, you know, bounce down. If that makes sense. Um, let's see here. Let me do something here.
Let's uh, let's get another track they're working on. And this is what I mean. If you if you don't solo this out, or if you want to monitor it, you're gonna have to put it to mix because it'll come through if you don't do that. Make sure you're on the right track. So you get the idea, you know, just me bullshitting around, um, you know, just for educational purposes only, um, but, uh, I hope you kind of get it. I hope, uh, anybody that has the, uh, MV8 OP1 gets real excited because it, it is real exciting. Um, I hope I didn't drive the price of the MV8 OP1 sky high through the roof more than it is now. Um, like I said, uh, this is this is a game changer. I'm probably gonna have to do a third um, video to show you like how you can like freak the loops even more. You know, it just it just opens up a whole nother ball of wax. The the game just changes. There's just other stuff you can do. It's just you can get crazy with it. Um, I said when you, you 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 can still mix the sounds, you know, you can go in and edit, you know, to get your levels right, you know, before you record and whatnot. You know, there's other stuff you can do in here with the BPM sync and some other stuff I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna leave that for another video. Now anybody out there who who has one of these things has to try this. This is the bee's knees, so they say. Um yeah, I think I'm a I'm a, I'm gonna stop there because it done went on about twenty eight minutes now. Um, said uh, anybody looking at this video didn't see the last one needs to go back. So I you know watch the track out no midi so I you know so you can get a little explanation on some stuff that I might not have been clear about in this one. Anybody have some questions? You know, hit me up. Yeah, I mean I I'll, I'll get right to them. Hopefully. But uh, definitely play around with this. Um, like I said, you got a you got a machine that basically came out in two thousand three, and it's still relevant right now. There's still new discoveries being figured out right now by not only myself but other people. Um, you know, you're talking about a twelve year old box. It's uh still got secrets in it. So with that. Wax, and I'm, I'm gonna get back with you again with some some more stuff 
you know, that I got coming that I never put out there that just ain't had the time to do without. I have some more stuff with the, uh, like I said, the uh, digital out going back into the digital end. As I discover them and, and some stuff I didn't, I didn't get to in this video. So with that, deuces.